Well, I got some extra time tonight, so I'm going to record some Legend of Korra. We're doing Season 4, Episode 8 today. Um, I'm saying that I have some time tonight because um, the time I'm recording this is probably only the day after I recorded the previous episode, um, which normally, you know, I wait about half a week, a week, some, somewhere around there. Um, but in this instance, I've got extra time and I and I don't have any other videos that I can really record right now, so Legend of Korra it is, and I'm excited about it because, look, it's, like, I'm excited about it, I'm also kind of sad, because the faster I rush through this, the closer, or the faster I'm going to finish this series, and I have been loving Legend of Korra, all of it, like, every, every bit, you know? I... This show is so good, <laughs> and like it's sad that I waited for this long in my life to watch it, but also I think I'm at the perfect like maturity level in my life to watch it as well. If I watched it when I was younger, I might not have appreciated it as much. So I'm, and I mean, hell, if I watch it when I'm older, who knows what I'm gonna be like when I'm older. Maybe I'll be curmudgeonly and I'll be like, this show sucks, there are too many women in it. So I don't know. Um, I'm just very happy that I got to experience this, and I'm very happy that I got to share it with you guys, but I don't know why I'm talking as if this is a finale. We're not. This is episode 8. Um, we we got many episodes to go. We got, like, what, five or so episodes to go after this? I'm not entirely sure how many episodes there are in this season, but that sounds about right. So, um, last episode, we had the reunion episode. I'm looking at my notes. We had the reunion episode, and we had um, Prince Wu was kidnapped. They went to save him. Um, at the same time, Varric and uh, Bolin were trying to make it across a checkpoint and uh, succeeded at doing that and helped some people escape as well. So there's some good stuff going on. Um, I don't know what to expect from this episode, though. Like, I, I imagine we're going to get some more Asami, Korra, and Marco uh, hijinks going on. Um, but I wonder how long it will take for Bolin to join back with the group and maybe bring Varric along. I don't know. That might not come until, like, whenever we do a full face-off with Kuvira. But anyway, uh, let's jump into this episode. Support the video if you can. Uh, liking, commenting, and subscribing all really helps me out. And my Patreon account is in the description below. That has the full-length reactions. You can sync it up with me and watch my entire reaction, as well as early access. You can get the next, like, four or five episodes on my Patreon account right now, which means maybe... We'll be finishing Legend of Korra on Patreon by the time you're watching this, so you can go check. We might be done. We might be finished. I might be moving on to a new show by then. I think I've got an idea of what show I'm doing after this. Um, hint, it's an anime, a very popular anime, and I'll be watching it in dub. But um, anyway, let's just do it. This is Legend of Korra, Season 4, Episode 8. It's been my honor to bring you news of Cora and her friends. Oh the shit! So many He's talking to us. Who can forget Oman and his e-boy with that fun? But oh my gosh! Me, sit back, relax, and take a trip down memory lane. This is gonna be a recap episode, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see how they do it. Because Avatar: The Last Airbender's recap you know, was a play. Mm -hmm. how dare you <laughs> oh my god. Place. She's very oh, protective of him. It's like a cherry berry lemonade. You're so weak. Woo down is your catchphrase. <laughs> no, That's really funny. It's not my fault. I was born that <laughs> way. I'm not like you, Mom. I was. Why is that? How do I not know stuff about you? Because you don't pay attention to him. Asked. Yeah. Well, I'm asking now. We'll gab session right now. How'd you guys first meet? Yeah, details. Well, and I were playing for the fire ferrets. You were a pro bender. Okay, it is a recap. Yes. I felt like Cora and I had a powerful connection. Oh, I remember that scene. Real good, That's huh? very cute. Ah! And then the Asami stuff. You really gotta work on your introductions. <laughs> hey, when you got charm like mine, you don't need introductions. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the charm. When you have looks like yours, maybe. So I was thinking we should spend some time together. Look, I really like you, and I think we were meant oh, for each other. Oh, is so cute. <laughs> Hot dog, Smooch City. Are they going to show the Bolin standing there with flowers? Whoa, I thought you were dating Asami. Two. <laughs> Naughty Mako. <laughs> take after your grandfather. <laughs> Guys, grandma dating Asami. Denial. Well, weren't you? Okay. I can't remember. Yeah, was yeah you were. <laughs> very confusing. I like a piece of me was gone. I was so worried. Yeah, and guess what? You didn't communicate you any of this with your fucking girlfriend. 
I bet Asami wasn't too happy about that. Yeah. I care about you too. And then they Wait, was broke that up here. Be breaking up with her? <laughs> yes, that was a breakup. <laughs> it didn't sound like a breakup. It was mutual. We had an understanding. Can I just get on with the rest of my story? Or oh, what? that's so funny. But they I made fun of themselves for that as you were with confusing son. scene. Trust me. That's funny. Good job. I love you too. You know, and then you two lived happily ever after. Not quite. You know, I don't quite care about Marco and Cora's relationship, but I like seeing Cora in love. <laughs> That's why I all want those scenes. You know. Well, excuse me, officer. Oh, this is a rough patch. I guess if we're both putting our jobs first, maybe there's no room for our relationship. Now here's what a breakup looks like. Jesus. Now that's a breakup. Oh my god, they're just I saying everything that I'm saying. My, <laughs> oh. my company. It's over. And then they teased oh. a thing between these two. I'm not giving up on you. I know, I know. Don't <laughs> tell me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Was it a bad fight? Uh, they edited my favorite part out of that scene, which is her going, why would no, I be mad? No, she does it in a really cute bad. way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Together and you didn't tell her you weren't? Just like your grandfather. <laughs> well, me and Asami were never officially back together. So this whole episode really? is about how Marco's a scumbag, huh? <laughs> you know, like so I know what that's like. I mean, to need distance from women. Because <laughs> so many. Lori is amazing and I really learned something. You did? That you're a scumbag. Yeah, I learned that I <laughs> okay, come at me. I can take it. Ah, I wonder if the season down. ends with him, with Wu being king, but being a good king. Will it? I don't know. I thought you might be cold out here. Are it's you two going to reminisce as well? But no matter what I do, the world seems to always be out of balance. It's up, not easy. Okay, we are reminiscing I I a bit. Really gonna I was terrified. Your Although this is good because we're gonna hear Cora's perspective on all My this. I mean, we know her perspective, but I want to hear her say no! it all. As soon as I defeated Amon, a new enemy took his place. Mm -hmm. a much worse one. You. So I imagine in these recaps, Cora is the voice of her own self-doubt, and Asami is the voice of how good Cora is. And all the good she's done. But then you were saved by more airbenders. Balance than ever now. Nothing's changed. Mm, I would You're say right, season two is the least yeah. in balance. She is. And you've got a dope haircut. Does anyone else feel like throwing themselves overboard? Okay. I've spent the last few hours too Are we doing recaps with Bolin and hey. all the while mentally Varric. composing the most exciting tale? Bolin as Nuktuk. Hero of the oh South. my god, Trademark we don't need a recap of this. <laughs> ah, bah, 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 bah. You're emphasizing the wrong story beats, let me tell it. <laughs> but he's too stupid to understand it, so I kick him out. <laughs> can I best Name's Bolin, by the way. Cora. Boring. Okay, so... When does the singing oh. start? There wasn't any singing. I was gonna say, are we now gonna see the, the love triangle bit from Bolin's side? So, the trouble begins... No, okay, the they're cutting past it. <laughs> ...is trapped in the spirit world. They're led by... Zahir, <laughs> Lotus and Master of the Skies, scariest kite that ever flew. <laughs> Zahir didn't team up with Vatu. How would that even happen? Oh my God. Hello. <laughs> it's Zahir. Oh. <laughs> Glad I caught you at home. <laughs> Very fun. Glad I can leave this too. Let me conference in. Oh, what the fuck is this? The oh my God. The what the fuck are they doing? The totally <laughs> He's way too powerful and awesome. Oh my god. Please not in Amon. The evil Unalak. <laughs> but incredibly boring and unpopular sorcerer from the north. Oh Who's my god. The other line. He met a fetching airbender. The oh, heir to yes, a vast Opal. Earth kingdom fortune. So smart and caring. And right now you're so pissing her off, Bolin. Well, not anymore. You've the turned against me right now. Oh. I'm not really sure if I like Fierce. I mean, Evil Squared might be better. <laughs> you have to assemble the fightingest airbender army of all time! Meanwhile, back with Zombie Amon. 
Okay, guys, I think we finally ditched him. <laughs> uh, very funny. I'm still on the line. So, this, about that this evil part's plan great. To destroy Nuck -tuck? Hello? <laughs> Anyone there? Guys! Bolin turning him into a giant! <laughs> they like edited Bolin's face onto. Annoyingly clingy person. Onto Cora. So Max the Queen of the Fairy. <laughs> oh my god. Help, <laughs> turns Unavatu into magic. You like that? It didn't make any sense! <laughs> what about Zamyamon? What happened to him, huh? Never let the truth get in the way of a good story, kid. Fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, the only fair thing to do is I'll put another episode in this video because <laughs> like the re it's, it's a recap episode. I think it wouldn't be great for you guys if I was like, okay, here's today's Legend of Korra video and it's this and it won't be too long. So instead, I'm just going to chuck two episodes in this video. So we're also going to do four nine today, um, but I will talk about this episode still. Um, because even though it was a recap episode, I watched the entire thing. I generally skip recap episodes, like genuinely just completely skip them. Um, this one, I decided not to because I felt like they were gonna do some different stuff and the different stuff they, they did was, um, kind of similar to Ember Island players in Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, except Avatar The Last Airbender, it was, that wasn't a recap episode, right? It was a recap of the series, but it wasn't the way we understand a recap episode to be, which is they reuse old footage so that they can save on animation costs or scheduling or whatever um, is, is the problem. Like, I don't know exactly. There's got to be a reason that they needed to put this recap episode in here. No, no TV show ever goes, you know what everyone would love here? A recap episode. Like, generally... It, a recap episode is put in there for budgetary reasons or scheduling reasons. And knowing how Nickelodeon continuously fucked over Legend of Korra, I imagine it was somehow Nickelodeon's fault uh, that they that they ran out of budget or whatever and had to chuck a recap episode in the middle. Um, but, uh, but there are some things that I like that the Avatar creators do. One thing that they tend to do is they are very in tune with what people think about their show and then they will call themselves out on it, which I think is very funny and interesting because you got um, uh, in Avatar The Last Airbender, there's, there's a few moments where they do that in Ember Island Players. Um, the main two moments that stand out uh, the first one is when they're like flying and they're like, oh, look down there. It's the Great Divide. And then there's like a gap and they go, eh, let's keep flying. You know, <laughs> where basically they're addressing the fact that people consider the Great Divide to be a filler episode and, and probably the least uh, impactful episode to the Avatar story and probably the worst episode of the show. Um, and so like they they're making fun of their own like worst episode, essentially. And the other bit is when um, Jet is, you know, g gets hit and he dies or whatever, and then they go, oh, and then the, the people in the audience go, did Jet just die? You know, it was really unclear where that was the same thing where they had to, like, in Avatar The Last Airbender, they had to, like, imply that he died. I think, I don't actually think it was that unclear that Jet died there. I, I personally always, like, was like certain he was dead because I think it was a, they did it in a really fucking incredible way. That's one of the best like death implications I've seen in media in general. Not exaggerating. Like when they when they basically when he says like Katara, don't worry, I'm gonna be okay, and then they're walking away and Toph whispers, he's lying. Like that's amazing because they set it up earlier in the episode that that she can tell when someone's lying. Um, by their heartbeat and specifically can tell when Jet's lying um, and it's like yeah it's just like a great way to to say goodbye to that character um, but anyway uh, in this episode they did that again mostly with the um, I mean they did it a little bit with like making fun of Unalak and stuff they they made fun of him a lot um, which you know I never had a problem with Unalak at all um, but I, I am sure the fans probably didn't find him super interesting or whatever. I always liked it, but um, but the main thing they made fun of is the breakup, which 
like makes a lot of sense that they make fun of that because um because yeah it's like that scene absolutely is something that you should poke fun of a little bit where i, I it's again like pretty well written scene overall but not quite like it doesn't quite work because it doesn't fully feel like it doesn't feel like a breakup and um and like the problem is that those two asami and marco are so bad at communicating with one another or at least marco is bad at communicating with asami that you kind of can't imagine that they'd break up with such a subtle breakup if you know what i mean like they're so bad at communicating with one another how can they be so on the same page to know that they're breaking up there you know um and we as an audience kind of need marco to have a proper conversation with this army at that point and we're waiting for it and we're waiting for it and he never fucking does it and it just feels like super horrible um so yeah like that it's that is funny i'm glad that they like you know hang a lampshade on it or whatever it's nice um but uh but yeah the thing about this episode is once it started and i was like oh yeah they're recapping in this episode i remembered i had heard that there was a recap episode in this show but not from any of you guys i don't know if any of you told me about a recap episode like at, at the time of me recording this video i don't think i've heard a, a peep of it <laughs> um which i don't know i guess that's okay you didn't have to tell me but um but i'm just surprised you know um but i remember hearing about it before i even watched the show where i think i was like reading or watching a video about recap episodes and how um and like how different shows have done them and people talked about how legend of Korra did it in a kind of creative way and i think i can see that that now because it's like i think it's not a amazing recap episode overall i'm not a huge fan of how they structured like they kind of went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a lot where it, it kind of is just like a bunch of random scenes thrown together essentially and it doesn't really tell a very good story um but the humor in the episode was good and i liked the little extra things where it's like they clearly were cheaping out on anima animation but making it very funny by having like reused footage of Zahir and Amon and whatever um all having a phone call together and it's like clearly reused animation but um but they're having like a weird new conversation in Varric's voice like I, I think that is a very funny um bit that they were doing there um as well as the bit where they like edited Bolin's face onto the giant core and stuff like that's that's all pretty funny so anyway let's not keep discussing a recap episode forever I know you guys probably don't give a fuck anymore so let's just move on to the next episode i'm not gonna be doing it right now i'm gonna actually stop the recording and come back and do it like tomorrow or something but for you guys it won't be any different so let's move on to season four episode nine of the legend of Korra. beyond the wilds that's my boy Ryu. oh this he's dude in the basement, but then he got air bending and he's been doing important errands. look at his hair now. now visiting him and we're just having <laughs> his dad time looks a lot like city. him we're so unavatu when he battled giant spear cora for <laughs> the fate of the world great job man i'm not uh why is that vine coming toward us oh no oh shit I don't cards. no it's a snake I'm going backwards no, why would you do that? <laughs> ah! Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. All right. Great Isn't airbending. Oh, airbender shit, ever? man. Is this because of Kuvira? Or is this a, the wilds fighting back because they're being harvested in the swamp? Everything's oh, okay? Paul. Spiritual energy coming from the spirit wilds. Something's wrong. Yeah, yeah I think... I think the spirit... Energy is sure all fucked now. Servants? Yeah, but it's Ryu. They might be at the mall for a while. <laughs> sure. Okay. Are you gonna see Kuvira's men? Yes, you are. Holy shit! They're having to fight back against the tree. 
this might help him convince the other leaders to finally take her down. Mm. I'll keep looking for Ryu and the others. Maybe. I don't know if the other leaders are going to care about I vines in a swamp, though. situation immediately. Vacation to a tropical island. Then when she gets there, <sighs> we reveal it was a trap. The this would work on it. you, oh, Wu. <laughs> we march in with an army of highly trained badger moles. Mm. Who's that? Do we know if Kuvia is that the Fire Lord? Keys? I'm mm. with Raiko. I say we go on the offensive and start by retaking Zalfu. I don't know what to do. Raiko, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... What's going on here? I want to hear about the oh, Fire Lord, hey, if that is the Fire Lord. Just kicking it world Zuko's style, daughter, right? Trying to figure out what to do about Kuvira. You invited him, but not me? <laughs> Cora, perhaps we called you back into action a little too soon. Again, him, not me. <laughs> barge in whatever they want. Guys! Oh, perfect! You're Holy right shit, here. they're back! We have top secret information for you! <laughs> yeah, they do. About the vine weapon. I don't know how it works. Let Varric talk. <laughs> it's a super weapon. The only way to protect ourselves is with a preemptive strike. My mm. airbenders won't be part of the Fire Lord hasn't attack. spoken yet. Neither will the Fire Nation. Okay. But Fire Lord Izumi, Kuvira Izumi. is a threat to the world. Of its history fighting nonsense wars. Mm. And I refuse to drag my nation into another one unless there's no other choice. I understand. Attack Fine. I get I'll it. I get that perspective. In that, you'll have my help. Okay, she oh, seems wait. awesome. I want to get to know her more. And topple your home and get your mm. mom captured and your, <laughs> and your dad. But I'm going to make it up to you. Pardon me, lovebirds, but I need a word with Opal. Oh, I hope Opal Private. comes around to forgiving Berlin. I'm sorry, kid. But Raiko He's just a little dumb. The other leaders to attack Uvira. I was worried about you. We all were. <laughs> Tried to warn me about Kuvira, and I ran off anyway like an idiot. Oh. You were right, and I'm just an idiot. You were just doing what you thought was right. Oh, you're both. You, <laughs> you were doing what you thought really was right, and you're a bit of an idiot. Oh my god, he's the best! No character ever does that. I want to hug again. <laughs> I love it. Holy shit. These vines are really angry. It's not our fault. God damn, Janora. Those wingsuits. Where do the vines take him? Oh shit, she's got for help. The vines. It must be hard. You probably have to center yourself to be able to send out a message like that. Like calm your mind for a second. Oh my god. We're gonna be fighting vines. Like how do you fight them? I guess just like that, you just gotta cut them. But they seem tough to cut. You need to use a lot of fire bending. Cora, look. But that'd only make them angrier, surely. Damn, what the fuck? And the rest of them. Does she have white hair? Yeah, I was gonna say, do your cool spirit bending that Unlock taught you. Maybe if I meditate into the spirit world, I can free them. Maybe. And if Vines come in attacking you right now, Mark is just gonna have to defend you. Where is she? Wait. What? Zaheer. Oh, hey no. Zaheer. Is this PTSD or? You can't fight me and the poison. No. Oh, flashback to You'll season three finale. Oh my God. Cora. Okay. What's wrong? She's probably not What's at peace here? enough to what meditate. Are you about? I'm here for you. What do you need? I don't think he is actually here? doing it. Cora, he's too dangerous. I think it's you Even doing it. Up, he can't be trusted. But he represents that. I want to save Janora and the others. Fishing into the spirit world from the southern portal. You've lost faith in me too, haven't you? Oh. No one thinks I'm capable of anything anymore. It's not that at all. Oh, I see I where I her character arc's going. I'm just Zaheer's in prison deep in the mountains outside the city. Okay. I'll call Raiko and get the clearance. We're having a Zaheer reunion. I hope Zaheer and Cora hug. <laughs> so, I don't know if you've heard, but Opal's kind of mad at me. I was hoping you could help me win her back. Yeah, girls awesome. love cute animals. Yes, I have an idea. What? What? Oh, shit. Is it I've captured Bolin? <laughs> What Pabu brought me saying you broke both of your legs was just a <laughs> Maybe. 
This will totally make me forget that you worked for Kuvira, the person who captured my family mm. and is probably torturing them right now. Let's just sit down and have a great picnic because we're so in love. Oh, that's very sad. Thank I understand why she's like that. It's nice to be welcomed back. It's no secret I never liked you, especially after you tried to have me kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> right. I own that building. A man has the right to blow up his own property. Right now, <laughs> put aside your differences. What do you say, Asami? Partners again? Mm. Fine. I'll help. But don't even. At least think Asami's about learning about forgiveness me. with her father. Oh. It's worrying, like, what if he sees her here and he just seems so calm and in control? It would make me even more scared, you know? Or, Zaheer's not in here at all and he's already escaped. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm so excited and scared! I hope he's got, like, his hair back and his beard and shit. He does! Yes! Ah, oh, he looks so much better with the hair and beard. So... Holy shit, man. <laughs> you still seem scared. <laughs> this was a mistake. You can't go into the spirit world. Mm hmm. It doesn't feel very spiritually charged. This is your problem. Doesn't matter what's to hear. The public city is flowing with spiritual energy. Blaming me is a crutch to make you feel better. That's it's true. Not helping you recover. I That's thought true. Seeing you face to face would put an end to all of this. Neither of us are the same as before. I learned to fly, but now I'm bound in chains. You have all the <laughs> power true. in the world and the freedom to use it. That poison should have killed you, but you were able to fight it off. <laughs> I think your power has limits. It's limitless. Whatever. That's a big compliment. Before you were always talking about chaos and freedom, and created the worst dictator the Earth Kingdom has ever seen. Thanks for that. <laughs> I've heard rumors about her. She needs Damn. to be stopped. Yes, she does. Well, I can't stop her unless I get over this block. Oh. I can help. Oh my god. Lead you into the spirit world. So he no is way. gonna turn to you? I can't trust you. But for now, our interests align. That's true. She wants to take down a leader. Kuvira is the worst leader of all. This far. What have I got the to antithesis lose? of everything he believes in. Let it play out. I can't! Oh. Don't fear what might have been. Mm. I have no control. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Yeah, she keeps pulling out of the vision because she is scared of it. I made it. And she can't work through it. And you led me here. God damn. Ooh, baby. There's a rava pattern on her chest. I missed you. That's a, it's such a cool effect. Holy shit. Found him. Connected to all the spiritual energy. Oh shit. So this is actually spirit bending now. It's not just water bending against the spirits. Holy shit. And now they go up to heaven. <laughs> she just killed them all. Dad! Aww. Cora saved us. As always. <laughs> All right, listen, before you go, I just want to tell Let you that Berlin I understand help. how you feel. I know there's nothing I could do or no big gesture that can make up for all my mistakes, but I love you. <laughs> okay, that's you know, progress. There is one come on a secret mission with us. Yes. Where to? Hell yeah. Zaufu, to rescue my family. Hell yes. You can do it, Bolin. Oh, I'm so hype. Holy shit. Okay, that was episode nine. That definitely was a lot more plot than the last one. Um, great, great episode. I, I'm so glad I got to watch that today. There was some great stuff there. So firstly, I'm gonna talk about Fire Lord Izumi, who we only saw the tiniest, idiest, bittiest bit of. Like I can't get a good read of like her personality and stuff yet, but here's what we know. One, Great design. She looks like a very sophisticated and, and intelligent woman, which is like what the Fire Nation fucking needs. Like, let's think of the Fire fire Lords we've had that we know of in the show. Sozin, and then what the fuck is the name of the one after Sozin? Um, I, oh, I can't remember what his name is, but then between, but then after that guy was Ozai, 
and then for a short time Azula, and then um, and then Zuko, right? So everyone from Sozin to Azula was certifiably insane. <laughs> and then you have Zuko, who like look, Zuko's a great guy. <laughs> we all love Zuko. Zuko is amazing. I imagine Zuko not to be an incredible leader. Like, not quite smart enough to be an amazing leader. I think he was way better than having any of those other people on the on the throne. But, um, but I don't know how much change he could have done. I bet you he kind of just was like, all right, all of the Fire Nation, just stop hurting each other. I'm going to keep the status quo going for a while. And then now he has a daughter who I assume he's raised in a respectable way. Um, I wonder who her mother is. Would her mother be Mai? I imagine Zuko and Mai were still together, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, like, I'm just trying to think, like, what their parenting style would be like. But regardless, she seems intelligent maybe i'm just saying that because she has gray hair and glasses <laughs> but she seems like she's very intelligent and like i liked what she said about like look i'm not gonna rush into a war the fire nation are known for our wars and it's not it's not a good legacy to have so you know i'm not going to just be fighting this war as a preemptive strike that's not a not a great look for us and it sets a bad precedent or rather it furthers a bad precedent we've already had a bad precedent set we were the instigators of a hundred year war that also genocided like almost an entire nation of people like it is uh it is absolutely not a great idea for us to just go at any like possible um sign of something going wrong to start another war so I, like, I completely get why she would say that. I also get why Republic City would be like, we should probably war against Kuvira right now while we still can. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I just like her so far. I, I want, I hope she's in this series more, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if like, that's literally the last we see of her because the Fire Nation and what they're doing, it doesn't really matter to this show right now. You know, like it was, they, I think they just kind of wanted to have her pop in so that we could see what was going on. I just, I find the Fire Nation right now in this point of the series quite interesting because I want to see, you know, what the Fire Nation are doing and, and how they've recovered and how they've changed. Um, and also I just want to see Zuko's daughter doing stuff, you know? Like, I, I, I love Zuko. I want to see the kind of child that he would raise. But, um, but yeah, anyway. So, we saw a little bit of Azumi. Um, the whole... I would actually do Opal and Bolin first. The whole Opal and Bolin thing is very sad. Because, like, Opal has every right to be mad. And she's not overreacting. Like, I'm sure there'd probably be some people watching being like, Oh my god, she's being such a bitch. Like, he didn't know any better. Um, but, like... Yeah, he didn't know any better, and it's really sad. But at the same time, like, she, you know, that that doesn't mean she has she has to forgive him, or that doesn't mean she has to, you know, go out with him again. Because what he did, like, or who he was with, rather, was was like incredibly evil. Basically, you know, he didn't really understand it, but it was. And this, and in her mind, like right now, I think in her mind, the sort of person that would do that is either a bad person or like too naive that they're gonna get you hurt again in the future, you know? Um, like if if Bo, like in, in her mind, she's like, I told you this. I said Kuvira was horrible, and you still continually sided with her over me, which means you don't have good judgment. Like even if you don't know what's going on even if you didn't realize that Kuvira was bad you could have at the very least listened to what I was saying and given me the benefit of the doubt and you didn't do that so I can understand her being upset here I can also understand her being uh more proportionally like upset than she normally would be because she's also currently grieving her family who have all been captured and shit like she she has 
every reason right now to be completely upset. I'm surprised we got the smallest, like, little cute smile moment when she saw Pabu at first, because she's not mad at Pabu, and and, uh, and was like, oh, hey, Pabu, it's great to see you. And, like, that, that was a really cute moment. It was short-lived, but very cute. And Bolin keeps trying to fix it with very, you know, small things, but that's the thing. Like, at the very end here, Opal was like, hey, come help us on this mission. That's how you help me, you know? Like, if you... If you were willing to put yourself on the line for Kuvira, show me right now that you can put yourself on the line for me against Kuvira right now. Like, that's a way to make progress. So, I get that. Um, the whole Zaheer blocking um, Korra thing, like, it wasn't Zaheer blocking her. And I mean, it was basically what I said, uh, as far as I read of the scene. Like, it wasn't Zaheer blocking her, it's... It's what Zaheer represents blocking her, which is Zaheer represents Korra's own helplessness, represents the danger of what she's facing, and represents her own limits upon herself. She's enforcing limits upon herself because she still sees, like, she's frustrated right now that everyone else sees her as helpless, but she also sees herself as helpless because she's uh, projecting other people's thoughts onto herself. She's like, everyone sees me this way, so I must be helpless. And that's what's frustrating her. And so when she, and like being, going to the spirit world, I think it's like it, a very big part of being spiritually in touch is like knowing, is being at peace and understanding and knowing things. She, Cora is not at peace right now. She can't be. She's constantly in strife so she tries to get into the spirit world and the spirit world is showing her or her own mind state is showing her why she can't get there which is she can't stop thinking about the fact that there are madmen like Zaheer that are going to poison her that are going to try to take the air out of her lungs that are going to kill her and end the avatar cycle and like and she she won't be able to do anything about it. She will be completely helpless to fight against it. And this whole series has been about Korra trying to live up to being an avatar. It's been the entire series, her character arc throughout the entire show. Like if you if you haven't seen that character arc, you weren't watching the show properly. Like that it's that is the been the through line of her entire character is I was told by some people that I was the avatar and then they kept me locked away from society for a long time while telling me how important I am and how important it is that no one can get to me and that I can't communicate with anyone and that all I have to do is master the elements and then I can protect the world and here's all the amazing things that Aang did. Aang at like 14 years old or whatever stopped a hundred year war and fought against the genocide of his people and uh yeah you're the next avatar after that one so good luck off into the world there you go like of course she feels helpless you know of course that's she doesn't she's like how am i supposed to do that i haven't even had a boyfriend at the time that that was you know going on you know like it's like i i haven't lived my life i haven't I haven't ever purchased anything with money. <laughs> like, there's so many things that she hasn't experienced in the world. How can she seek to balance it when she doesn't even understand what a bank balance is, you know? So I, like, I can totally understand Cora's helplessness. But at this point, you know, I think this final season has to be about her finally, like, understanding that she is incredible and she and she is human she can be both those things just as ang was incredible and also very human but she didn't watch avatar the last airbender that's the difference and that's what i think people have to remember we can look at ang and go well ang wasn't perfect ang got these things wrong ang got these things wrong ang was like incredibly jealous especially when it came to katara and stuff um, Aang, like, had his own religious beliefs, but also didn't know how to work through them properly. Um, Aang had tendencies to, under stress, take it out on people, you know? 
um, not physically, but verbally take it out on people. Aang had a tendency to run away when things got too hard. Like, there were so many flaws with Aang that we saw. And also, Aang wasn't a great father to some of his children, you know? Um, was a little bit neglectful towards them. But what Korra knows is the legend of Aang. She didn't watch Avatar The Last Airbender, but what she did was hear stories about all of Aang's incredible feats and how amazing he was. And then sometimes she's spoken to Aang and whenever she speaks to him, he's very wise and stuff, but that's because he's a an olden spirit at that point and is very intelligent and uh, wise and only comes up when he knows what he's talking about, you know? He's not going to pop up and go, uh... Uh, you know, like he's going to pop up when he has the answer to a question. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's it. That is episode nine of The Legend of Korra season four. Um, we did both episodes eight and nine in this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, support the video if you can. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and go to my Patreon account, which is in the description below, if you want the full-length reaction, as well as early access. You can probably finish The Legend of Korra on my Patreon account right now, I would think. So go check that out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.